Hello, welcome to part seven of Building a Buggy with me, Neil. Um, first of all, I have to apologise. I'm sorry this video has taken so long. I've had countless people, when's the next one coming out? Which is still amazes me that people are that interested. But in all honesty, I've been busy. I have been working on the car, but I've been, I've been busy with work. I've been busy with car shows, bike shows, a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, we had our local car show. Um, I took my hot rod away to the UK to an amazing show called Giant Killers. Um, if I do that again next year, I'm definitely going to film it all and, and have to show you how absolutely amazing this show was. Um, what else have I been doing? Yeah, we've had the local car show, Giant Killers, two local bike shows. I did another trip to the UK to look at a vehicle with the intention of buying it. Ended up not buying it, so that was a big expensive pain, but that's the way it goes. Um, another thing I've got to mention, 1,500 subscribers. I mean you'll know if you've been watching these from the outset that I'm amazed that I've got any subscribers at all. So 1500 is just amazing. So yeah, carry on doing what you're doing there. Over the moon with it. Now, back to this stupid little beach buggy. Um, what are we going to do in this episode? Mainly painting, to be honest. We finally get to get a top coat of paint on the, um, on the chassis. So remember, go back a few episodes to that Ganky old rotten knackered 1968 bug chassis that I paid next to nothing for. Um, now it looks brand new again. So all the hard work is is we're starting to see some rewards for all the all the time and effort that we're putting into it so far. Um, so a little bit more on that later on. Um, before we get into that, another thing I've been doing, just chipping away at gradually, was sorting out the gearbox. Um, you might remember from the early videos that again the gearbox was a horrible, filthy, skanky mess. Um, I wasn't too sure how I was going to clean it up before I painted it um, and I'll be honest I didn't even bother filming this part because I didn't think it would be worth it but I bought one of those I don't know if you've seen them they're a real cheap I think it was about 30 quid on Amazon so not a lot um, it's a sandblasting attachment that goes into a, a Karcher pressure washer which it, it looks like the cheapest, nastiest hunk of junk you've ever seen, um, but it actually did an amazing job of cleaning up this gearbox. So if you want to do something like that, I don't think it's quite man enough to be taking paint off and things like that, but for cleaning up crusty old aluminium and that sort of thing, it was absolutely amazing, to be honest. Um, the only advice I'd offer with that is you have to use 100% dry sand. So I use two bags of kiln dried sand, um, you have to make sure it stays totally dry throughout the whole process, but yeah, it cleaned this thing up absolutely beautifully. So yeah, couldn't be happier with that. Um, I'll show you now. It's just sat on the bench next to me. So you can see we've got a nice, nice few coats of grey epoxy on there with some primer in between as well. So I'll just show you a little bit of footage there of, um, of how we achieved that. Not the most exciting thing in the world. It's only a gearbox, but we want it to look presentable. Um, so yeah. I'll show you a few shots of that now and then we'll get into some chassis work. So yeah, let's do it. Part seven. Okay, that's the gearbox primed. Got about three coats of epoxy on there. So that's that's been left to dry for a day or so. Now we've just got to go over it with a red scotch bright, give it all a you know a good good scuff up like that to key it for the next coat, and then we're gonna get some grey on there. Nice. Obviously, before I put any primer onto this chassis, I had to get the whole thing sandblasted. Now, as much as I wish I had the um, the equipment and the capability and the space and everything else to, to do this sort of thing myself, I just don't. 
But thankfully, I've got a really good mate, Nick, who is an absolute legend. I, I get him to do almost all of my blasting. Um, he's, I trusted him to blast the body shell of my hot rod. And yeah, if you know how badly wrong these things can go, if you get the wrong person doing it, then that shows you how much I trust him to do this. So we'll skip to some footage now in, uh, in Nick's garden of him blasting the thing. So once again, thanks for that. Um, also while it was there, he put, he literally blasted it and then minutes later gave it a few coats of epoxy primer just to seal it for me. Um, which yeah, that, that in my experience is the absolute best way of, of getting rid of all the existing rust and everything else. Um, and making sure that it's going to last as long as possible. So let's skip to some footage in, uh, in Nick's back garden where he's, uh, doing his thing. Okay, we're back, we're primed, we're getting somewhere. Come out really, really nice. I'm happy with everything that's, uh, happy with everything we've done so far. Um, next thing I wanna do is give it, it's had a good good couple of coats of primer to, to sort of seal it, stop it from going rusty. But what I wanna do now is we're gonna give it another few coats of primer, but before I do that, I just wanna straighten out some of these, these wobbles in the, um, in the spine from where the original stamping process was done. Um, interestingly enough, there's no wobbles where, where we've done any of the welding, you know, all the way along there and where our join is, those are some of the straightest bits. There's a sort of like a little wave across it there and we're a little bit bumpy up there, but of course none of that matters when it's a beetle because it's all covered in carpet, but we want it to be a little bit nicer than that. So I'm gonna, gonna rub it back, very, very thin skimmer filler in there, smooth it over, more primer, and then we can paint it black. Cool. So for the filler in the chassis spine, um, in those areas that where I just wanted to straighten out those little wobbles in there, um, didn't use anything particularly fancy, literally bog standard isopod and P38 filler. You can get that pretty much anywhere. Um, and as long as you use it properly, it does a perfect job of that sort of thing. So the process for that was, it's pretty straightforward. Um, just roughed it up with the DA with some, I think it was a 60 or 80 grit in there, something really, really coarse. Um, and then wipe it all down, give it all a good good cleaning down, make sure all the dust and everything and all your grubby mitt prints and all that are all off it. Um, and then get some filler in there, rub it all back. Um, yeah, it's not an entirely necessary step on something like this, but I think it's just the, the little things like that that take it as I've said before, not just from being pretty good to, you know, pretty damn good, I like to think. So yeah, nice little little simple, simple job, but it's just gonna make things look a little bit nicer overall. There we go, that's better. Just flipped it around. And that's all I'm gonna do for today. So what I like to do with stuff like this is, you see I've rubbed through to bare metal in a few areas. I'll just give it a quick, quick degrease, get all the dust and everything off. I've blown the worst of it off. And then just gonna give it a, Give it a squirt with a little bit of um, where is it? A little bit of etch primer just to just to seal up those bare metal areas. Just for tonight, you get, you know, my shed isn't completely sealed. You get a little bit of damp in the air, stuff like that. So, a bit of primer just to seal it up till tomorrow because most of it's going to get rubbed off again anyway. So, might be overly cautious, but I can live with that. Okay, we're ready to get some more primer on this thing. Um, if you look behind me, you'll see my super high-tech paint booth that I've just been putting together. Um, polythene, staple gun, a few other bits and bobs. You gotta work with what you got. So, if we have a look in here, we're all rubbed down from our first coat of primer that we gave it just after it was blasted. So, you can see I've... Uh, Put a bit of effort into making sure the shed doesn't get covered with overspray. Also, what I've done is knocked up a couple of uh, a couple of doodars so that we can rotate it easily. So all I've got to do is pull this pin out, flip it over. We can do a 180 and do the other side. 
So I've got all my holes and everything all stuffed up with little bits of masking tape. The only other bit of masking I've done there is just where the, the chassis number is there because I don't want that to get drowned in so much primer that we can't read it anymore. Um, yeah, so now we're about ready to start making a mess. But before I do that, I've got to give it all a good wipe down, a really good degreasing. Like I say, it's all rubbed down. We've just got to get all my grubby fingerprints and all the dust and everything off it. Now, you can just use normal spirit wipe for this but i actually prefer to use that just good old-fashioned brake cleaner and um, spirit wipe is pretty much the same thing it's just this is in a pressurized can where this is good is for getting in all your little nooks and crannies you can really you know blast it out so got to give her give her all a bloody good wipe down um i've run out of paper towel but it's all right got some kitchen roll from the kitchen don't tell my girlfriend um yeah so let's give it all a a good scrub down, we can get some primer on there. Happy days. Okay, let's mix up some paint. This is a epoxy primer. So we've got our primer in there. We're gonna dump our activator in there. Um, you know, a lot of people will use your fancy paint mixing cups with all your, your, your measurements written out on the side there. When you've been doing it long enough, you don't really need to use those, to be honest, especially for stuff like this. As long as you get the ratio near as damn it, it still goes off. It works absolutely perfect. I've painted hundreds of things with this method, so thin it by probably 10, 20% or so as well to get it, get it through the gun, because this stuff is pretty gloopy. So I've been using this screwdriver for, for quite a few years to stir paint, as you'll see. One day I'm gonna cut it open and count the rings like a tree. Oh blimey, that's full. I've been a bit ambitious with that. In we go. Right, let's make a mess. Sanding, 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 more sanding, sanding, got there, do a bit of sanding, just loads of sanding. Don't forget around here, look, all the sanding, a little bit more sanding, 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 sanding. It's all right, we're just doing a bit of sanding, it's all right. Next up, we're gonna do some seam sealer in. So basically anywhere where I've got one piece of metal joined to another and there isn't a, a weld sealing the join, you know, if that makes sense. Um, most of it's sort of full of paint in there now, but there is a panel sat on top of another panel there. So what I need to do is basically seal that edge so it stops any, any moisture getting in there, corrosion getting in and out, this, that, and the other. Um, so I'm gonna have to go all the way around everywhere where we welded in these floor pans. Um, and replace where the, the factory Volkswagen seam sealer was around all these parts here. It just future proofs it all, make sure it's gonna, gonna last as long as possible, you know? So what we got is a tube of 3M over paintable seam sealer, some masking tape, some rubber gloves, and some good old fashioned brake cleaner. So what I need to do is strip a tape either side, get some sealer in there, smooth it over, take the masking tape off, and then smooth it over again, if that makes sense. So let's give that a go and see how it turns out. I've already done the underside, so I know how it's gonna turn out. I just wanna show you how I've done it. So we'll go onto the bottom, probably about, <clears throat> about an eighth of an inch or so from the, from the tunnel itself, all the way along. And then another bit on the top, again, probably about an eighth from the corner. Oh. 
Now for the seam sealer part, I have to own up to making a little bit of a mistake here, um, not with the actual process itself, but in the way that I filmed it. I stupidly had my camera on the wrong setting, um, so I managed to film a time lapse of something that I was trying to film properly, you know? Um, but as I've said from the beginning, I am not a videographer, um, but I'll explain it just so that it makes sense. Um, you'll see that I put a line of masking tape down either side, um, and then make one smooth pass with the gun of seam sealer and um, try not to put too too much in that in that corner there um, And then the next next trick I find works really well is with a rubber glove on your hand um, Soak your finger in brake cleaner So it's a bit more slippery and then one smooth swipe from one side to the other Then you can demask it take those two strips of tape off straight away and then same again with a clean finger, but with you know brake cleaner on it again on the old rubber glove um, and then again one smooth swipe from one end to the other and that way you get a really nice clean bead that um, when there's paint over the top looks absolutely spot on. Um, you may be wondering why I didn't put the seam sealer on under the primer. Now there's a really good reason for that. Um, it's over paintable seam sealer for a start so the urethane top coat is going to stick to it like crazy um, but the reason I don't like to put it under the primer is because the primer itself goes goes pretty rock hard after a while um, but the the top coat that I'm using stays ever so slightly flexible so if you were to put it under the primer there's a good chance that as this stuff flexes over the years that the primer can crack but I find if you put it over the top of the primer and then put the top coat over the seam sealer things stay a little bit more flexible and I did stuff like this absolutely years ago that still looked bang on so you'll have to take my word for it. Next up, it's finally time for some top coat on the chassis. Now, this was something I've been looking forward to for, for so, so long. Um, I wasn't certain how I was going to paint the thing when I initially started building it. You know, it, it kind of would have looked nice to have a gloss black chassis, but then that looks good for five minutes, um, and then it inevitably gets full of scuffs and stone chips and everything else. Now, after thinking about it for a while, I thought the best thing to use would be... Uh, U-Pole Raptor. Now, if you've never heard of this stuff, um, it's it was originally designed to be a truck bed liner, like a spray-on truck bed liner. So in the back of a pickup truck, obviously gets loads of abuse with things getting thrown in and out the back and dragged in and out. Um, so they developed this stuff to be as, as tough and durable as it can possibly be, and also make it as as simple as possible to spray. So that sounded really good to me. Did a little bit of research into it. The only thing I wasn't completely sold on was the really, really coarse texture of it. I actually had a friend who painted the entire outside of his car with this stuff, and it looks really, really cool for what it is, but for what I'm going for, I wanted the texture a little bit finer than that. So it does say that you can spray it down and put it through an HVLP paint gun and everything else. Um, so I thought I'd give that a go. Um, it made sense to me to do a couple of test pieces to see what sort of finish we were going to go for. Um, as it turns out, I like to think that I've fluked it and figured it out pretty quickly. So I'll show you just how we managed to do that. Okay, let's mix up some of this stuff and do some uh, do some test runs. So what I've done, I don't want to end up wasting a whole bottle of this stuff just for doing tests. So I want to just be able to use a little bit at a time. So looking at the uh, looking at the old destructions there, um, it's a three to one ratio. So I've got 100 grams of paint there. So by my calculations, that means I should have to take it up to 133 grams with the hardener. So carefully do that. 135 that's close enough then we need to thin it about 10 percent to get it through a paint gun um so let's say that's the well that be 146 ish there we go right now get something to stir with Cool, yeah, that looks like a, it's thick as far as paint goes, but I'm guessing that's the way it's supposed to be, even though it's thinned, to give it that sort of splattery textured effect. So let's give it a go. So for our first, first test, 
I'm going to put it through a HVLP spray gun. So got a two mil nozzle in there. Um, pretty big. This is a gun that I use for doing primer and stuff like that, so it should cope with that pretty well. Um, and if I find that, uh, I'm sort of aiming for slight, slightly smoother than I've seen this stuff in the past, and I think that's going to be the way to get it. But if I want to go for the fully textured, got that, got the old shotgun for uh, running the stuff through. I don't think you thin it to run it through there, but that's why we're doing test runs. So let's give this a go. Now, for doing this, I've just got some offcuts of the, um, the sheet material that I use at work for making signs. Got loads of offcuts of that about, so let's see how it comes out. I'll try and film it at the same time as painting it, a little bit awkward. Oh yeah, that comes out. Just label it so we know what's what. HVLP gun at 40 PSI. I'm actually quite liking look at look at that texture. I reckon by the time that's got two coats on it, that's probably going to be about right. But no harm in doing some more. Okay, for this one, we're going again thin 10%, but this time through the shots gun at 50 PSI. Um, these things normally behave a little bit better at slightly higher pressures, I find. And you do have to hold them a fair bit further away. So again, I'll try and do try and film it as I'm doing it. Yeah. Fine for a pickup bed, but I don't think we'll be doing it that way on the floor pan. That's a bit too spattery. But this is why we do tests, see? Cool, I think that answers how we're gonna do that one. See ya. It was at this point I had a chassis all primed, rubbed down, ready to go. Um, I'd figured out the magic formula for getting that really nice finish with the Raptor. Um, the big issue was where the hell was I gonna paint this thing? Because unfortunately it's just not viable doing something like this at home. Um, you saw that I primed it in the garage, that's not too bad, but to try and get a decent finish on any kind of top coat in here, um, because you haven't even got room to move around it properly, all the spray dust hangs in the air, you get bits and bobs falling out the ceiling, and whatnot. Um, it, it's fine for primer because that's all going to get sanded down but for a top coat we wanted something a bit better. Um, so I reached out on Facebook um, hoping that a mate would have you know an empty shed or you know a corner of a warehouse or something that I could use for a day to paint this thing um, and then I was I was messaged by a, a old friend Matt that I know from the power boat racing days a few years ago um, with a really really kind offer um, to use his almost brand new paint booth that he's not long had installed in his in his body shop, um, which I was blown away at that offer because I would never ask anybody to use any kind of equipment like that worth tens of thousands. Um, but he's been watching the videos from the outset. He saw that I needed somewhere to do it and very kindly offered me the use of his paint booth for a morning. So Matt, I can't thank you enough. I really, really appreciate it. So. Next up, I'm going to show you what I managed to get up to in this beautiful state-of-the-art paint booth with my stupid little Volkswagen chassis. Let's do that. Just 
enough to fit in the bottle, that's good to know, because for the next time, I won't bother weighing out the thinner. I'll put the hardener in, load it up to the top with thinner, and I know we've got the right ratio. So we'll get that in there, give it a good old shake. There it is, we're back home. And would you look at that. Really, really pleased with the way this has come out. I can't wait to start bolting some parts to this. <laughs> You're probably sick of me saying it by now, but as I keep saying, these aren't how-to videos. It's just me showing you how I'm doing it. Um, but I do like to think that this episode in particular, you probably could use as a, a, a pretty accurate how-to of how to get a decent, fine textured finish with that awesome U-Pole Raptor paint. So just to summarize exactly, exactly the process that I went through to get it, um, Epoxy primer, there was two or three coats on there, that was rubbed down with 180 grit sandpaper, so pretty coarse, coarser than you would use if you were doing any kind of gloss finish or anything like that, but the, the textured Raptor covers up all those scratches and it means it adheres really, really well. So sand that all down with 180, clean all the dust off, spirit wipe, everything else, um, and then it was an HVLP gun at 40 PSI with a two millimeter fluid tip. Um, I found one of the, the the major keys to this stuff working as well as it did work um, was how in how you apply it. Um, you sort of have to you pull the gun back a bit further than than what you are normally used to if you if you paint a lot of things, um, because you don't want to fall into the trap of putting too much of the stuff on in one spot, because that's when you end up with a you know a thick splodgy glossy bit in a sea of texture, and that's not what you want to go for. So you go back from a decent distance, about 18 inches or so. Um, put it on, not super duper dry, but not not loading it on, if that makes sense. Um, another thing I found really helped was to go in one direction, painting as you normally would, and then go in 90 degrees to that, and then in some instances, even diagonally as well, just to really randomize it and, and mix up the patterns and stop any kind of striping from appearing. Um, but the most important thing I found was once you finish doing a good coat over everything, pull the gun back by a good two or three feet and then spray a good mist. And then those droplets will land over the whole thing um, and you'll end up with a real nice, even textured finish. Um, as I've said dozens of times already, I'm really, really happy with how this stuff has turned out. Um, and if you, if you follow these steps, um, there's no reason at all why you can't get a finish just as good as this. Um, yeah, the paint booth probably makes it a bit better as far as contaminants and things landing in it. And we did get to bake it afterwards, meaning it was dry enough to take home within a couple of hours. Um, the stuff will still air dry. So if you painted something in your driveway or your shed, it'll probably take a week or so to go fully hard, but it will fully cure. So um, another thing worth mentioning, if you are building a buggy yourself or doing something a similar size to this, um, I bought a kit, a four litre um, kit of the U-Pole Raptor, um, and I used three bottles. So three litres in total um, and one litre was literally the perfect amount to give the chassis a good coat on both sides. So if you're doing this sort of thing yourself, 
a litre per coat. I gave it three coats. To be honest, two probably would have been enough, but I had four litres to play with, so four litres is what we went for, not four, three. I've been talking too much, and that's the sign that I should probably end this video. So once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for waiting. I know it's been a, a little bit longer than, than, than it should have been between the, the last video and this one. If you're watching this in the future, obviously none of that matters, so don't worry about it. And uh, as usual, Instagram, Neil of Steel, blah, 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 all the other stuff, you know the score. Get out in the garage, go buy some of that Raptor stuff and go paint something with it, because it's awesome stuff. And you, Paul, aren't even paying me for this. I had to pay for the stuff myself. So you, Paul, if you're watching this, Send me some more of it because I want to paint all sorts with it now. That's enough of that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.